Hello, this is Steven here. We're going to be going over how to make a basic trigger. We're just going to stick with basic triggers today, um, but I will go over a slightly more intermediate topic as well by the end of the video. So let's get started. We have the trigger window open here, but just so you can see, all you have to do is click on triggers and there you go. Now we're going to make a new trigger here. The first thing that we want to do is we want to define a pattern. Um, and so we're just putting in whatever it is we want the trigger to match. In this case, um, we're trying to match the fact that I'm drinking a flask. Um, and we're going to be putting it in a bag. So we've done that. We've, we've put in the pattern. Just a simple descriptive name will do. Well, there we go. Now it's important not to freak out about all the other stuff here. There's a lot of options, but we're just trying to keep it basic. We're going to save it. And then we're going to go over here. Now remember, uh, we're making a trigger here, so what we're going to do is I'm going to drink the flask, um, and then we're going to put the flask into a bag so it's just not sitting out there in our inventory. Alright, so... In order to send anything to the game, we're just going to use the send function. Um, and anything that we send is we send as a string, so we're going to put it in quotes. So in this case, we're going to um, put the flask into the wispy bag. Uh, so when this trigger fires, it will send that line to the mud. And we can test it right here. Fantastic. You've made your very first trigger in Mudlet. Now, in most cases, uh, you're no, probably not drinking your flask once. Um, you might be drinking it a few times before you want to put it in your bag. So how do you do that? Well, that gets us onto the topic of um, variables. Um, so we're going to put a spot here. We're going to be changing this trigger a little bit. But we should go over and create the variable first. Now, um, in Mudlet, we can create global variables, um, which is very useful because these variables are active between different triggers and aliases. All right, um, It's helpful to sort of keep these variables managed so you can make a script um, for those variables. Um, however, because of these variables are global, it's important um, that you try to keep them grouped up, especially if you're using anybody else's triggers or scripts. Um, so we're just going to do something very simple and put all of these variables into a table called shamanus. Very, very straightforward. Um, so shamanus equals shamanus or blank table. Shamanus.drink equals zero. Now we just need to activate it, and now those variables are in the game. They're in Mudlet for us to use. So now we're going to have to go over here and modify this slightly. So basically what we're doing is a simple if-else statement. So here we say if my drink variable is less than 3. Or some other value. And then we're ending the statement. So if it's less than three, we're just gonna be increasing the variable by one. That means that um, we've drunk some water, but we haven't drunk it enough times to put it back in the bag. Now, here's the key. When we do drink it enough times to put it back in the bag, we want to reset our variable. So, very straightforward. We're just setting our variable again here, my drink variable, and, um, oops, nope. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, we're, we're just going to sit there and um, set that to zero. Uh, and fantastic. We have a slightly more complex trigger. And now... If I get my flask from my bag and I drink it, um, what you'll notice is the very first time it doesn't do anything. That's how we want it to be. And drink again and again, and there we go. It goes 
into the bag and there you go you have made um, a, a very basic trigger and a slightly more intermediate trigger using variables um, and it really didn't take that much effort.